Hey, this is a message to the pack of losers that make up the core, the core of SMP supporters. Now, to be very clear here, I'm not. I emphasize, I am not talking about everyone. I am not talking about everyone who voted SNP. I'm not talking about everyone who voted yes in the referendum. Although I believe that was a very, um, I don't understand why anyone would do that. I don't understand why anyone would vote to break up their own country. That makes no sense to me. Um, but that's their right. Um, so, I'm not talking about everyone. I am simply talking about the extremists that make up the core. And I make no apology for calling them that. Um, you know, what really pisses me off is not only that uh, the SNP leadership is going back on its promise, um, both Sir Sturgeon and Salmond made it very clear that that was a once in a lifetime event. Now, instead of just moving on, and trying to um, be progressive, they're continuing to push for a referendum, another referendum, and another one, and another one, and they will not quit until they get what they want. Now, uh, there's an interesting phenomenon that has happened recently. The SNP has sort of taken the mantle of the social democrat movement in Scotland, as, uh, and I think that explains why they've done so well in the general election. But now that Jeremy Corbyn has been elected as leader of the Labour Party, and I'm not a particular fan of Jeremy Corbyn's politics, I'm, I'm a centrist, I'm not a socialist, but I do appreciate the fact that Jeremy Corbyn sees the bigger picture and recognises that the best way to achieve social justice is by working together, i.e. across the United Kingdom. Um, I said I'm not a fan of Jeremy Corbyn's politics in particular, nor am I a Tory. In fact, I hate what the Tories are doing. And I would argue they're just as divisive as the SNP. Um, it's no surprise the Tories done badly in Scotland. But here's the thing. Nobody, nobody can possibly question Jeremy Corbyn's socialist credentials. Now, the hardcore of the SNP have really exposed themselves because when they found out that he supports the United Kingdom, they branded him just like they brand anyone else who doesn't agree with them, a tartan Tory. Um, well, he's not Scottish, actually, but they, they branded him a Tory. And that is incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Branding Jeremy Corbyn a Tory is a bit like calling Mao Zedong a capitalist. I mean, you cannot find pretty much anyone in British politics, except maybe Jim McDonnell, who is more socialist than Jeremy Corbyn. Um, so to me, that shows that the real agenda is solely independence. Um, I've always been wary about the narrowness of the SNP's thinking. Now, they they go out of the way to insist that they're not a racist party. And it is true that they have English members. I'm aware of that. But the hardcore SNP supporters are motivated by Scotland versus England. There's no question about that. Because if you, look at, uh, if you challenge these people, the response is almost always you, we English prick. And well, then a, a diatribe of expletives and um, ramblings that, apart from having terrible grammar, um, are entirely based on English versus Scottish. Now, I frequently be called an English prick simply for stating my belief in the United Kingdom, and I'm not actually English. But even if I was, surely that would contradict their claim that they're not a racist party. Um, you know, other controversial parties have to defend this. Uh, UKIP has had to defend it. The BNP is a racist party. There's no question about that. But their leadership always goes out of the way to try and say they're not racist. I don't see much difference with the SNP. Um, they will say, for example, oh, but they've got our English members. Now, my question to those English members is, are you happy sharing a party with people who hate you? Incidentally, I, just because there's English members also, I think their, narrow, their thinking is as narrow as, as the Scottish members. They too want to see an end of the United Kingdom. Um, so their thinking to me is just as narrow. But um, 
basically, I am sick and tired of Lee separatists trying to push yet another referendum. All it's going to do is divide Scotland bitterly. The last one was bad enough. You know, I've mentioned that it was good that it energised people politically, but the very negative side was the SNP divided Scotland. They divided Scotland. And they dared claim that the unionist side was running a negative campaign. The unionist side were building friendship cairns on the border, organised by the Tory MP, um, Rory, forget the guy's surname, but, uh, you know, he organised that to demonstrate friendship from all over the UK. Meanwhile, hardcore nationalists were spreading their fear, spreading their anti-British diatribes all over the internet and harassing and intimidating anyone who didn't agree. Now, to be clear, like I said at the start of the video, I'm well aware that not every SNP supporter behaves in that way. I'm sure there's reasonable SNP supporters. I'll never agree with them and I'll never understand their thinking but um, I don't believe they're all bad people. But it is unquestionable that there is a hardcore at uh, the centre of the SNP that has a very, very, very narrow and very, I would say, disturbing agenda. Um, it makes you wonder what sort of country they're trying to make Scotland into. They're trying to make it into, I sometimes wonder, are they thinking of a single party state? Well, anyone who dares question the SNP will be branded a Tory. This is the sort of atmosphere they're creating. And it's all very well to say, oh, well, they're just a minority. But they're a very vocal minority. And they clearly have a very, very large um, base online. Now, are there unionist jobs? Are there unionists that behave in an unsavory manner? Yes, there are a few. I admit that. But I also believe that there are a lot less more obvious certainly during the referendum than the nationalist jobs. I mean, you did not have gangs of unionists pursuing SNP politicians around. That's a simple fact. You didn't. Not in the same way that Jim Murphy was harassed. That was orchestrated. Salmon and Sturgeon couldn't even bring themselves to properly condemn that. Um, so there's several points here. Firstly, I do care about this because I care about my country. My country is the United Kingdom and I care about it. And I don't think any other country in the world would watch itself torn apart and not care. In Spain, they're, they're reluctant to even give a referendum. So what does that say about the United Kingdom? Clearly, this country is so terrible and it's such a tyrannical regime that uh, we give a free and open election to decide the future of Scotland. Now, what other country in the world would do that? Very, very, very few. I can't think of any, in fact. So the SNP agenda is based on the vilification of the United Kingdom um, by digging up ancient history. And my question to that is what other, you know, tell me one country that doesn't have blood in its history. Is Britain's history perfect? No. But I feel angry and sad that the, these people continue to push this separatist agenda. Leaving aside all the practical problems, i.e. opening embassies in an independent Scotland, the financial cost of that, which to me is not scaremongering, it's a practical question. You know, a single embassy costs millions. Um, it's also the sentimental as aspect. And one thing the unionist side, the unionist side focus on practical arguments, but there is a real sentimental issue here. Hundreds of years of shared history. I just, I can't stomach the idea of Scotland breaking away from this family of nations that will weaken this country. And you know something, I think unionists have behaved a lot more civilly overall. I mean, most unionists do not talk about treason and treachery, but it could very well be argued that people are trying, who are trying to destroy this country, tear it apart, isn't that treason? 
So if they're going to throw around treason claims at unionists, maybe we should start to fight fire with fire. I'm sick to death of this. And if there's another referendum, I'll be up in Edinburgh, just like I was for the last one. But this time, I'm not going to take their shit. If I have any national screaming in my face, I'm going to fight back. I'm not talking about violence, but I'm going to give as good as I get. Because these people rely on intimidation tactics. And, you know, Scots shouldn't feel intimidated about that. I think there was a phenomenon in Scotland whereby, I mean, when I was in Edinburgh that day, the city was swamped by nationalists. There was very few unionists in sight. Now, I wonder, was that because, and actually Edinburgh was one of the cities that went for the union. That makes me think that people voting um, no in Scotland were intimidated. They were sort of silent no voters. People should not be ashamed to say that they're pro-UK in the UK. This is crazy. It would be like being shamed to say you're a proud American in, I don't know, a state that threatens to secede. So I'm going to leave it there, but I'm so, so fed up with this. I really, I want to move on. You know, I don't want to obsess over this. I don't even want to be uploading this video. But these people simply will not accept democracy. Now, the fact of the matter is Nicholas Sturgeon said that was a once in a lifetime opportunity. You can argue about what's fair and unfair about the current setup. OK, but in the end of the day, Scots were given their chance. They were presented with the arguments and they chose to stay in the union. Now, what about respecting the choice of the majority of Scots who said no? By the way, those who did vote no and to have changed their mind, I'm not going to dictate to other people how to think, but I would ask you a question. Uh, why did you vote no? Were you thinking purely of Scotland or were you thinking of the United Kingdom? In my opinion, if you were thinking solely of Scotland, that was selfish. And it's fickle, I think, if you've changed your mind. Where's your conviction? You know, to change your mind within a year, it's your right. I'm not going to tell other people how to think. But to me, that, that's selfish because you're only thinking about Scotland. You're not thinking about the whole country. And this is a country. Let's be very clear about this. The United Kingdom is a country.